Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk about concurrency management in Entity Framework. And we are going to see how concurrency check works. So, I have an entity in here. And this entity is one of my DB sets in my DB context. Uh, I have already migrated my database and updated it. So, it's ready to use this is my database and this is the data in it and uh, let's see it in, in action this is my application here so this is my setup and uh, now as a user i want to change this title from this post but I want to manage the concurrency. If at the same time I'm changing this post, someone else, somewhere else, tries to do the same and change the title uh, to something that he or she knows, um, I want to raise an exception uh, and be notified of that. And to do that, and the easiest way is to use Entity Framework. To manage concurrency, the easiest way to implement is to add an attribute called concurrency check to any of your properties inside the model that you are interested. And if I add this concurrency check on top of any property, that property would be checked by Entity Framework for a concurrency confliction. So right now, title is being monitored um, using Entity Framework for any change during save change. And if there was any concurrency problem, uh, Entity Framework would raise an exception called DB Update Concurrency Exception. And so um, let's try it out and see how it works. Notice that uh, I didn't have to go to my package manager console and add a new migration for this change. A concurrency check happens in the background in Entity Framework and you don't need to update your database or anything. It just works uh, using queries and I will show you how. So let's just um, start our application in debug mode and first make sure that you have a breakpoint on save change and let's start and let's go back to this edit and let's change the welcome message to a goodbye message and submit so i am on my breakpoint and before saving the change uh, i go to SQL Server Management Studio and change the um, welcome to welcome to and save and now if I continue so the point here if I continue there will be an exception for DB update concurrency and the data would not be saved let's see continue and we are back to index page this welcome to is what i set here uh, simulating another user somewhere else and the goodbye message or title is not being applied or saved and this is the exception and if i were raised for us so just basically means that uh, we are handling optimistic concurrency and uh, the exception rates for that. Three, there are three main ways to manage concurrency in databases. The last in wins is the default behavior of entity framework. The last one who saves the data uh, would win the concurrency game and his or her data would be saved into the database and override all others and pessimistic 
it should be implemented by us developers entity framework does not support that and in pessimistic view we prevent users to access or edit uh, the data that is being used by other users so if i'm currently accessing my edit page and i am at this edit page some kind of luck should be applied to this row and all other users that want to access the same address the same record uh, would be rejected by application that's something that you should implement on your own and as i said the framework does not support that and that's usually not required uh, or not very um, useful thing to implement i remember sharepoint has some kind of feature like that because in companies in day-to-day um, uh, -day work and workflows you sometimes need that and uh, for a document workflow to pass from one station to another station uh, this kind of concurrency would work because it takes a long time uh, or days maybe uh, for a document workflow in a company or in a, in a government organization uh, but um, in web applications in public web applications users are constantly using data changing it and uh, managing it in a pessimistic uh, overview would be very difficult and optimistic is what we implemented here we uh, we let users access data and even change the data but if uh, by chance by any chance these chains overlap and we would raise an exception to the user uh, or let him know and that uh, there is a concurrency problem and he should try again uh, later maybe so in this video i showed you how to use concurrency check there are other ways to implement optimistic concurrency management uh, using entity framework and sql server uh, that i would talk about in another video but in my view in most cases the concurrency check and that we implemented here would be enough and last but not least let's see uh, how concurrency check works so if i go back to the logs uh, you can see that there is an update to my database and here i am changing the title of my post but i am using it in a condition where id equals to p1 and the title equals to p2 so uh, entity framework generates this query when you have a concurrency check and you are only allowed to update posts uh, or title of, the, of a post uh, when uh, and only when it matches the same ID and title when you read it. So in my application here I am reading the post and at this moment uh, entity framework keeps the value of title because of the concurrency check and uh, somewhere in the memory and when you're saving uh, it makes sure that you are only applying save change to the entity that you read here if between finding and reading data from database and saving data into database between these lines someone else change the title and this exception would be raised and the data would not be saved that we that that is what we actually 
followed in the beginning of this video uh, but I wanted to just to explain uh, how it is working in the background so it is all the magic of where and making sure that uh, we are only changing uh, the record that we started with so that's it for today thanks for watching let me know if you have any more questions or want me to do another example or demonstration over this topic see you soon